I just want to see what they look like lit up. Oh, of course. One per two bulb already. That's probably my fault. Oh. Haha. -ha. So we're going to put... Let's see up there. There's a bunch of little holes drilled all the way around. got the digital read out here that's a nice addition to an altar lathe and we got the graduated dial here that we theoretically could be using and the way they did it in the old days they had you know for each different diameter they put these uh stops on but you really got to look closely and you know where that thing is reading out to three tenths of a thou you know it's pretty hard to gauge three tenths on there so So if I did this right, this would be a really snug fit. I might have to cool down the spindle to get it on. Might. That's cooling off, we'll run a thread on it. Thread's good. Now that bearing should slide right on there. So that's pretty good accuracy for 1967 machine, right? So that was like in the tenths oversized when it was warm and then cooling it down a few degrees just brought it right to where it's a, a slip fit. And I never used the caliper not once on it. Everything was off the DRO. So this thing is unbelievably precise considering how old it is. Maybe it's not as fast as a CNC, but it's faster than just about anything but a CNC. So that's basically it. 
That's the spindle for our ruby tracks. We did a bunch of them here yesterday and we're gonna finish them off. And then uh, in our other video, you saw me do the first part of the bushing. So um, once I get all these finished, then I'll show you the next step. And basically what we're gonna do is just taper that end a little bit, square it off and then bore this end of the bushing and face it and make it like a 2000s interference fit. And then we'll press that spindle into that bushing and that'll be another part basically done. should work. can't come. Oh, you poor fella. You poor boy, you can't come. So all I need is a flat screwdriver because earlier in the day wouldn't be a big deal but as you can see it's just about dark so we're going to give her a drink right down the curb we're going to see Come on, for God's sakes. Uh, one more. Finally. Woo.
everything in here. Oh, look at that. Right there. going to be too dark on the river for any more so uh, I'll tell you all about this thing tomorrow morning back here all this stuff fell down in uh, Fiona a couple years ago more firewood there made a mess but it's all gonna come up as it's all gonna come up as birch here so I'll have uh, I'll have a nice hardwood bush I guess in a few years we'll have to uh, have to keep it thinned out that should be enough for one fire anyway so the fan boat so everything went good last night as far as I could tell um, this is an old paramotor I used to fly this I never took any videos of it well I guess I have one video I might be able to share anyhow it's been years since I've flown it and it's probably not flight worthy anymore so friend and I had an idea a couple years ago to make this little plywood boat and stick it on and uh, use it for the river so uh, so that's what we've been doing this is the third year with it now um, this year the challenge was just getting the thing running it uh, it ran like crap in the beginning wouldn't hardly make any power and uh, I had to educate myself on these carburetors and put a kit in it, it took a couple weeks to get one but we got a new coil pack on and then they sent me this air breather. Now that I put the air box on, it needs to be retuned. And we did a little bit of that last night in the video you saw. But I'm going to tune it just a little bit more. My goal with this thing is uh, I want to do the Conway Narrows with it. So, okay. This is where we're at now. Woodvale, Prince Edward Island. And where we went last night is right there. Mont Rose. We launched right at the bridge we sailed around here a little bit and here a little bit um, but where i ultimately want to go right through here this is the conway narrows this is all shallows here the average boat even even small fishing boats can hardly get through here because it gets so shallow and then lennox island around lennox island haven't decided if i'm going to sail all the way from home to there and back or I may just get dropped off out in here at Biddeford. It's a boat launch, so I'm considering launching there and then sailing out through by Lennox Island and then just making my way home one evening. It seems that the weather is more favorable in the evenings than it is in the morning, but the downside of that is if I get out there and get stuck at like eight o'clock in the evening, it's gonna to be tough for somebody to come and find me. So we'll have to play that one by ear.
that you keep I'll stay where I am for eternity I don't know If something's gonna come my way I don't know But opinion we're going a lot slower since I put that air cleaner on I set the GPS 25.2 miles an hour that's our max speed so we're on par with what it was before just sounds slower I guess now it's like it's, it's almost like it's running out of fuel I'm glad I put that ore on. Okay, we're gonna take that air cleaner off.
Like what the heck? What the heck? Spark plug's dry, so is it not getting fuel? I'll have a plug wrench next time, I bet you. We're getting closer. Run, baby, run. Not good. We sprung a leak. So the battery died in the GoPro. Beautiful evening, I made it back to the boat ramp but it's still not running right. I think if we're gonna try to do anything else with this thing, I might as well just go find somebody that understands that carburetor because I clearly don't know what I'm doing. That's the nice thing about the turret lathe, right? Once you get your boring bars set, you just leave them alone and just keep going around the, around the clock, basically from boring bar to boring bar to boring bar, and you set your depth, set your diameters. The only variation that I see in this machine is as I go through the day and the machine warms up, it'll grow a little bit. Um, I adjust for that usually throughout the day, or I just, Generally don't work a full eight hour day on one part. in so pretty much all we pretty much all we have to do now is just weld around there and then we'll put it back in the lathe and turn this skin off and we'll have a finished part and here we have the finished spindle so we started with cold roll 1045 for the spindle. This is just hot rolled mild steel bushing. We got our cotter pin hole that we drilled with the CNC mill, our threads that we put on with the geodesic, and then uh, there's where we welded it on the rotary to lock it in place. So this spindle, just so you're aware, is this right here. 
So we weld that to this tubing in this fixture, which in another video I'll show you. But for now, that's our spindle.